Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. This is a person that I'm very interested in discussing because I never heard her name until I started following your Instagram channel. She was dubbed the Lady Al Capone of Washington, D.C. and the Queen of the Washington Underworld. Talk to me about the flamboyant personality who was able to maneuver and become successful in a male-dominated field. I'm talking about Odessa Madre. Yes, another fascinating character in an underworld scene of Washington, D.C. that you don't really hear about very often, especially in another sector of organized crime, the black community. Um, as you mentioned, Odessa Madre, they called her the Lady Al Capone and the queen of the DC underworld. She was a colorful and compelling and affluent character. She was one of Washington DC's most successful underworld figures ever. Um, she, you know, she was flamboyant. She was flashy. She, compiled her empire during the 1930s as a prominent liquor serving joint juke ju joint and brothel entrepreneur so those are just like um uh you know right. whore, whore, yeah whorehouses, whorehouses. Uh -huh. yeah exactly that sell liquor during prohibition and she could often be seen decked out in lavish mink coats you know mingling with music artists legendary musical artists like duke ellington nat king cole count basie and Billie Holiday, and they would often perform at her club Madre, which was in, I'm not sure what section of D.C. it is in right now, but I know it's still standing, um, the building at least. And if you go look at my Instagram account, that's actually on there. And she was known to host big time parties there. Um, she owned plenty of brothels and they all employed upwards of 20 women and she could often be seen with a lot of them by her side. So there's, I'm not, I don't know if there's proof, but I believe she might have been lesbian, um, which obviously doesn't matter. Um, and she was known to flaunt large, big, large bank roles when she went on her massive headline making spending sprees. Uh, actually, did was able to find some of those headline making spending sprees in the newspapers archives that I have access to it's pretty cool stuff and uh, whenever she left her house she always had a bodyguard by her side she had a few different cars she could be often seen in her hot Lincoln Continental um, and in 1990 um, she was still alive around this time but at her death um, a former vice squad officer told the Washington Post that, quote, Odessa loaned a lot of money to needy people as well as provided contacts for gambling and drugs. She knew practically every big time gangster nationwide. She was what they call a counselor in the mob. She mediated disputes between black and whites like a referee. She kept a lot of people from getting hurt. So that quote says a lot about her and her reputation um, in a male dominated um, scene of organized crime Lady Odessa Madre really was feared as any and respected as any as you can tell uh, she allegedly had a net income of over $100,000 in her day which is obviously a lot of money during that time and she never had to leave DC um, so you know she had, she had the police department in her pockets. They say she even practically ran that herself. Um, and she was really just a lifelong underworld character. She controlled many rackets. She was arrested 30 times on 57 charges. Uh, she served time for robbery, narcotics, gambling, and more. Um, and she died a sad death with really no money. They say she was really taken advantage of in her final days. Um, and she actually passed penniless in 1990. And when you mentioned that post on my Instagram page, that post actually got lots of love. I think that this woman deserves like a movie on her life. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of gaps in her story, but I know she was a very prominent character in DC in every community. I mean, it's not too often that you hear of someone called Lady Al Capone. Um, yeah. So she's a yeah, she's a true queen pin, and uh, I think she deserves to have her story 
uh, come to the forefront a little bit. And, you know, it, it deserves to be known. So I think for the listeners, that's definitely somebody you might want to check out. Um, there's not many pictures of her. Um, but I also have a quote from her that I kind of just I thought was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, if you show them that money, if you got a wad, honey, they'll fuck up to you like you was a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> so I thought that was funny, too. And uh, she's definitely an intriguing character, uh, Lady Odessa Madre, and one of my favorites, actually, to research. And when I came across her, I just knew I had to put something together on her life. Yeah, I can't believe I've went my whole life without even hearing her name, like you said. And then, you know, in preparation for the show, I dived in a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, why Why is there no movie about her? I literally can't find anything on YouTube about her. I had to go to Google and, and you know, Google her. And, um, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing that um, her name is one that doesn't stand out. She was apparently... Uh, rumors you, you mentioned the lesbian thing she apparently uh, was rumored to have an uh, have an affair or relationship with mom's Mabley right and, um, I did see that yeah yeah I, I, I heard that and as well you, you mentioned that you know she was um, everybody was cool with her you know the whites the blacks um, apparently she grew up in an area that was half black half Irish which kind of helped her during her career yeah. since a lot of her Irish you know the Irish people she grew up with ended up becoming high ranking members of the um, the Metropolitan Police yeah yep and it's interesting too that you talk about how she was brought up in that black and Irish community uh, I, like you said I think that really helped her make a footing Be, just because um, you know Washington DC now is like a pretty cultural place but back then a lot of the police departments were ran by like Irish guys in, in America or Irish people uh, I'm not sure if you have any familiarity with that but I know that was like my last name is Sullivan so there you go oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> half white you know what I'm saying then uh, I know like a lot just for example like um, Nucky Thompson or Nucky Johnson, excuse me, from um, Atlantic City. Like he was the sheriff of Atlantic City. That's a big time Irish family. That's just an example. I know Chicago had their Irish police department. So being from that Irish community, I think that really helped her. And like I said, I think she uh, at one point controlled some of the police departments in DC. Um, whether she was paying them off or she was just feared. Um, you know, either way, she's definitely somebody that should have her story told on a larger scale. And like I said, that post that I made got more love than like any of my other posts. So I think she's somebody that really has caught the eye of some people. You know, she's very um, unique, of course. And like I said, I think she definitely deserves to have her story told more more often than not. 